Hey everybody, my name is Rido, and today we are starting a series covering the game Dracula's Legacy. Now, this may be the first time I've ever actually said this, but I am really, really grooving on this background music of this main menu. It sounds really, really good. And depending on what I paid for this game, the music alone, just sitting here, listening to it. Ah, oh, man, I really like it. I really like how this looks. Too. This is going to be a short one, but it's uh, mostly a hidden object game, but I think we're going to have fun with it, hopefully. Hidden object games have a tendency to be not so good. As you can see in the options, the, besides the volume and of the effects and music, there's not a lot to change here, except for this advanced mode, which I have no idea what that is. So I'm going to leave it by default off, and we can start right now. Ah, as I've seen, re I've seen this before, yeah. Casual, the hint button will be refilled quickly. There's a button that highlights all the active areas. Mouse over to highlight all active areas. Advanced, the hint button will slowly refill. There's no button to highlight all active areas. You cannot highlight the active areas. Ah, yep. Yeah. This is that hidden game creator engine, I bet. That's why these games come and go so quickly. It's easy to make them well that's pretty good animation to start with most hidden object games don't even bother having moving in objects at all two people interesting for a video game Ah, see, they get separated. That makes more sense. So, there is definitely a difference between the quality of the animation we saw in that intro and what we are doing in the real game. But at least they tried. And I guess that, that should be applauded. Here we're seeing some little sparkles of things we can click on. And this, let's see, show interface. Turns that on and off. Coming down here will also show the interface. This, I assume, is just the menu, which we won't need to do. And what is this? This is all the things we can click on. And this is the hint button. All right. So let's start playing this hidden object game. Uh, would I like some interactive help? Sure. That I was clicking on this and I was not expecting to get hit by an animation of Dracula. Click on the knife to pick it up. Do not show tutorial pop-ups. Oh. So we've got the knife. Click to continue. Click on the lantern to zoom in. Click on the button with the rows to open the inventory, you can also open inventory by moving the cursor down. There's the screen. Drag the knife to the piece of wire holding the lantern together. Click on the piece of wire to pick it up. You get a piece of wire. Click the back to return to the general view. You can also click away on the outside of the frame. There we go. Click on the chest to look inside. Drag the piece of wire into the lock in order to open it. Yeah. Lock pick. Take the crystal. Press the back to zoom out. Really? I'm not going to take anything else? Click the lantern to take a closer look again. Click on the door of the lantern to open it. And I assume put the lantern in it. Click on the passage to go up. 
Uh, do I really need any more help past this point? Probably not. See, now, th here's the issue, is that we've gone, we, we've crossed from that 3D animation to this 2D animation. It, it kind of feels like, if we can, I want to click back here and grab this. Mechanical device, can't click on that anymore. We have this mechanical device we can stick here. need a gear and I can't take anything else All right. so how many things can I click on now I'd have to come up here interesting point where they placed it all right so I do need to be up here So it's almost right now not a hidden object game. I can't go any further until the creature stops obstructing the passage. I need to find a way to drive the creature away. I'll open this. Uh, knife? I don't think I can take something from here while the snake is present or awake. That's a hint. Spear? And so now we've got this, this, and this guy I guess I just can't interact with yet. Hmm. Can I go over here? Yes I can. A gear. A shaft. And I guess that's all I can get there. So I want to go backwards. Put the gear in. Yeah, this feels like a very quickly, easy to figure out uh, point and click adventure game more than a hidden object game so far. It's a little bit of both. Cutscenes coming really fast. See, and there was no telegraphing at all that that was going to happen when I moved the gear. I was simply moving the gear because it's a gear in a video game. Uh, so I find it kind of just unsatisfactory uh, to succeed at something when I haven't even done the simplest of things. Uh, well, to succeed not knowing what you're doing. Some puzzles need additional items. Find them in the main game and put them in their place here. So, obviously I need another piece of this. So, I won't bother with that. And... As long as that snake's still... It's like, unless I can use the shaft on the snake get rid of it. Nope. We'll go to the hall. Her eyes are glowing blue. Hello, my child. My name is Christopher Kelmendi. I've come to help you. Can you help me find my boyfriend, Matt? We came to this weird place, and then suddenly we were attacked by a horrible creature. It seemed like it chased us for miles and miles, but it was really for just a few seconds, and then I fell in here. I think it must have caught Matt. What's going on? What was that beast? And where's Matt gone to? Your fiancé is in great danger. But you're in even greater danger right now than he is. 
You must rush and escape from this awful dungeon. That creature you recently encountered was nothing compared to the horrible beings that lurk down here. Luckily, all of them are asleep at the moment, but as night falls, they'll awaken from their sound sleep. So hurry, my child, and find your way out of here immediately. So, no reaction to talk about talking to a ghost there. The lip flaps there as the ghost was talking did not line up at all to what he was saying, but there is in-game voice acting, which I've seen much bigger companies, much, much bigger companies. Uh, particularly, I just played Costume Quest, and Double Fine did this. They made a game with THQ, when THQ was still a thing. Uh, so, they made a game that seemed like it was for kids and put no voice acting in it at all. It is our pickaxe connected. This path is potentially collapsed and there's some sort of mechanism but on the other end, but the heap of stones seems too unstable. Let's try the pickaxe on it. Hmm. Seems I'm not gonna climb up to the top without a way to stay stay safe. Hmm. seems strange that people would put this extra effort in here, but it's kind of nice to see. Let's look here. There's some sort of niche behind the stones. I should take a look inside, but I need to widen the opening. Alright, pickaxe that. Hmm. It feels almost if, as if the creators of this game were working on being good video game creators it, uh, as far as animations but didn't have a story or anything to put it around or an actual gameplay engine so they made a hidden object game to wrap around their animations this is what I'm what it feels like I get objects from the list below objects that are highlighted in blue need additional actions you can pop up additional menu by clicking the button with the crystal once there you can use the hint or skip the hidden object gain scene completely as soon as the skip button is refilled so if you don't even want to play the hidden object parts of this it's gone you can take it out so what's the 12 here mean looking for a clock a tiny fish oh there's 12 objects but they're only showing me four of them interesting a flute a coin where oh where is a coin is it this quarter here hidden in the background a bell right here a spider making these hidden object puzzles is really easy all you have to do is have each uh, each item its own Photoshop layer effectively and then add on top and remove away scorpion is tied bow here's a tied bow a feather see right there and that's everything as far as the white ones and there's only three things left olives mm -hmm. this one's a puzzle so this probably really oh the solution was over here that was really easy I just accidentally got the solution this game seems like it's going to be incredibly easy, which is kind of a shame, because as soon as I get really deep into it, I feel like I'm going to uh, potentially not have anything more to 
do with it. Yeah, this is... This is gonna be weird. Can opener on the can. To get olives. Why are you specifically looking for olives or any of these things? There's never a reason. That's, that's what they need to work on is how can you uh, how can you explain why let's see yellow dragon let's see yellow mouse oh no the dragon was right there I just had to paint it yellow I was thinking too complicated. I was thinking that that this would be painted yellow, then hatch into a dragon or something like that. Then can't go back in there. I get this flute, and where I can go and what I can click on seems to be nothing. But I do have a flute, and flutes and snake charmers make sense. So let's try it. This is this is more animation than I've probably seen in the past five hidden object games I've played. In fact, it can be quite frustrating for just the laziness of the uh, people making them. And you don't have to be lazy, certainly. You look here, here's a person probably being too ambitious, but at least it differentiates the game. And that's why this game was rated as very good. It's not all about time, either. Games can be short, just to make them good for that entire time that you're playing. And I won't complain. Most people won't complain. So we're making Medusa head here. If we haven't figured that out. Wait, was that the solution? No. We have to match all these snakes on the outside. So we'll just keep on moving around until all the snakes match. Hmm. I believe that's close. But this doesn't connect so I need to twist this one until it does show make sense and then I'll have to turn the others in the inner rings to line up with that wait was that it no Maybe. Oh, what am I doing? I'm. I probably could just move this and uh, arg. Well, so it was supposed to be faced the right way. So we'll. Just continue adjusting this outer ring, these two outer rings, until everything lines up. There we go. So, what can we click on here? We have this and this still. Let's try the knife on the vines. There's a tunnel past the roots, I feel something flowing from there. Harpoon? Nope. And if we go back this direction, the nothing there's nothing to click on. The The main problem though with games like this is it's always an incredibly short amount of stuff just an incredibly incredibly short amount of things have I already done 
maybe a fifth of the game? Mm, I don't know. Let's see, each one of these is just somebody walking and avoiding traps. But it connects the story and makes you more involved. Most people wouldn't have shown the transition at all. You would have just uh, heard a sound effect and then it would have popped up text going, Whoa, I almost triggered a trap there. Let's see. I wonder how many times we'll end up using the knife as some kind of lock. If this is Dracula's legacy, I wouldn't be surprised if this whole cavern is full of vampires. Um, is there a mechanism going on here? can't click past it and those are the only two things neat shaped like a gigantic bat the coffin doesn't seem to merely be shut it's locked Knife doesn't work with that. Hmm. The other thing we have is the harpoon. Hmm. Hmm. The path is partially collapsed and there's some sort of mechanism visible at the other end. But nothing else. So it almost is to the point where I should just ask for a hint because I'm in a weird way. Can't go any further back this direction. And when I click this, there's several things you that are getting highlighted that you just can't interact with anymore. Hint tells me to go that way. And hint tells me to go that way. And we still have only two things to interact with. Hmm. Oh, grab the rope. Throw up with the harpoon. Now, maybe we use it with this. Now we come back here and we use it with this. That makes more sense. So there's a mechanism here. There's something that looks like a gold tooth lying behind the gear, but I'm not going to take it out for the gear wheels are moving. All right. Yeah. Again, I, I'm seeing a major flaw here in that the game is just solving problems for me without me even realizing that that was connected. Uh, they needed to have had a line of dialogue or something to say, yeah, this thing here looks like it might be connected to the other thing. So we've got vampires galore here. Why do they have the caskets if they're sleeping hanging upside down? Let's go ahead and take this. Because we might as well. And the game just throws you out. And when it when a game throws you out of an area like that, you're you're hitting 
the game's helping you just speed run the whole thing. I now know I don't need to go to those two places. And let's see, we can put the gold tooth in there. And the gold tooth back there. And what? A couple of gold teeth and a crystal missing. Uh, if I find the crystal, then it will probably open up and give me something. And is there anything else to interact with? Not unless I wanted to do something crazy and interact with the bats. What a terrible vampire. What a terrible vampire. It's just, they're all terrible vampires. Hmm. Interesting. And how could I slow down the progress I've made to, to this point? What could I possibly have done otherwise? Was there any object that one of the things I picked up with might have even made sense to be used with? Not really. We haven't picked up enough items, nor have we run into enough things to use the items on. I hate spiders as a child. They look dangerous, so I wouldn't want to risk going them with your bare hands. Fine, go with them with an axe. Um, so that's interesting. The axe is still not enough protection from a spider. I guess the axe is probably for this then. A good question there is like, if we had the pickaxe and the axe at the same time, we would have run into two walls that arguably it would have made sense to use an either one on but they spread it out well so you didn't run into confusion unfortunately I kind of need some confusion here it's a puzzle game and if the game puzzle game never confuses me or then and I'm never puzzled how has that succeeded in its namesake <laughs> there's a glove I is a metal glove really gonna help against spiders and this is a lock doors locked the padlock is too heavy to knock off easily I think I can't go without a key uh, and there's something over here to move I guess I kind of cheated that didn't I a part is missing for what looks like a Tetris puzzle hmm I certainly can't call this a pure hidden object game because we've only seen one hidden object puzzle. Of course, some of the worst hidden object games I've played are were built around giving you or having you do the same hidden object puzzles uh, back to back with no downtime. And it, that too can be annoying. Can I rotate these? Hmm. Well, if I can't rotate them, then they have to connect this way. Like that. Let's see. That one goes there. This one goes here. And that one goes there. Easy puzzle. Sometimes I think I need a more difficult puzzles, but that's always difficult to to do. Hmm. You don't see in AAA games though that puzzles are ever incredibly easy or incredibly usually not incredibly hard either. And I think that just comes down to testing, testing your game out with more players doing betas, having people come into your office and, and tell you how they work with. It also probably has a lot to do with not using a hidden object game engine and using something that can do a few more different things. Hmm. I will say this is several steps away from 
from just being a walking simulator or an, a 3D animated movie. That being said, like that cutscene right there is one of the main videos on the Steam store. And it feels like it is kind of slightly bait and switchy to, to show that and say that most of the game is like that when not really. Most of the animation cutscenes are like that, but nothing else. Anywho, that's going to be it for this recording. This is, like I said, going to be a short game and we've already left one area. I end all my recordings the same way. I ask you to like share subscribe comment if you want to and watch every second of my videos all that helps me out with youtube tells them that my videos are worth watching if you want to support me even further than that you can click on my name righto on the right will be a blue button that says support this channel you can click it and make a donation also by clicking on my name right it'll get you to my main youtube page there's a playlist tab click on that you can see a playlist for every game i've ever covered Finally, down below in the description box, I have links to all my social medias, Facebook, uh, Tumblr, Twitter, Google+, Twitter, did I say Twitter? Uh, also links to Battle.net and Steam, so follow and friend me on all of those services too. Thank you for watching, have a good evening.